Hey, that's me, Zip. I've been playing RuneScape for years. Bossing, skilling, you name it. But after all this time, I have no pets. Last time on Zip No Pet. Start from the beginning and get as many Zora kills as possible. We've got 300,482 coins. I think this should be good for a couple Zora kills. Ooh, wow, that's crazy. I just got a Serpentine Visage. Oh my god, Magic Fang on 500 KC, let's go. Time for another challenge, Zip. Hope you like running. So, I started running. And by that, I mean doing rooftop agility courses. What are you doing? Agility. It's been great. Good suggestion. Are you stupid? I didn't even give you your task yet. And why are you having so much fun? What? But I got this cool outfit. It's time for a real challenge. By running over agility shortcuts throughout Gilinor, I'll give you some cash to face the Abyssal Sire. How about 10k per obstacle? You have a time limit, 15 minutes. If you manage to get a Sire kill under these circumstances, I shall allow you to finish your Slayer task hunting him. Fail, and it's a whole week of agility. That's it? Honestly, I've been enjoying agility recently. At the Penguin course only. No. With only a short time to prepare, I quickly looked through the agility shortcut list, then I went to the bank, pulled out some teleports, some gear, and it was time to get going. Okay, first things first, we headed to Trollheim because I know there's a lot of different agility shortcuts here on both sides of the little hill that you teleport to. So we went down the first three on the left side, then we teleported back up and went down three on the right side. After that, there was another shortcut over to the east, uh, which we went over real quick. I didn't actually know that was there ahead of time, but it was a nice bonus one. And then I thought there was a shortcut south of the Trollheim teleport, but it turned out that this is actually not a shortcut. This is just the way to get up normally, I guess. After that, my plan was to go to the Slayer Tower, up the Slayer Tower through the first shortcut. And so I walked through the Aberrant Inspectors, and of course I got hit by one. Oh, come on, I can't do the other one here now. But on my way to the Slayer Tower, I did notice the one shortcut by Paterdomus, so I went back to the Fairy Ring and went through that shortcut as well to get another easy one that I wasn't really planning on doing. After that, my plan was to head to the Taverly Dungeon. On the way there, there's a shortcut from Falador, and then once you get into the dungeon itself, there's about four shortcuts we can do in pretty quick succession. After we did those four, the only thing on my mind was more the fairy ring shortcut, so I used the fairy ring to get to Zolandra, and I went over that quick shortcut and right back to the fairy ring. Then I was trying to go to the fairy ring at the bottom, at the south of Mortmire Swamp, but I couldn't figure out which fairy ring it was off the top of my head. So eventually I had to open up the map and look at it, but we did find the fairy ring I was talking about, and I went over that shortcut to get back to Mortmire Swamp. While I was checking the map, I saw a shortcut that's sort of south in Bergdorot, so I used my teleport there for my Mauritania legs to get over that quick shortcut. And then I was reminded of the Necropolis shortcuts by Tombs of the So after that, I used my Karamja gloves to teleport to the Shiloh village, and then I knew there was a couple shortcuts I could do around here. So I crossed the river, then I climbed the vine outside of the shortcut, and then I crossed the river outside of Shiloh village. At this point, I was kind of running out of ones that I had like predetermined off the top of my head. So I teleported to Falador again because I knew there was a way to climb the wall with a grapple, but first I went south to go under the underground wall. Then I came back to Falador to do the grapple on the northern wall, eventually planning on doing the grapple in Yunil. But first, I noticed the wall in between Port Sarim and Draenor Village on my map. And this reminded me of another shortcut right near a spirit tree in Hesidius. So I did that one next. And then after that, I was ready to head back to Yanil. At this point, I forgot that there's also a wall you can crawl under at Yanil, so I did that one, teleported back to Yanil, and finally got to the grapple wall there. Ah, oh, jeez. Uh, okay, what do we do? What do we do? Uh, Chronicle, uh, South of Eric. Okay. 
I thought there were other shortcuts around Varrock, but it didn't really seem like there was a lot of options. So at this point, I figured I'd use my Necklace of Passage and go over to the Outpost. In the Elven Pass, there's like three shortcuts, two right next to each other, and one a little bit further down the path. They're not too far apart, so it was pretty quick to do, but I think I may have lost a little bit of time on this one. I'm not sure these were the most efficient shortcuts to do. After this, my plan was to head to Corsair Cove because I saw a couple shortcuts around there. I don't want this guy let me in. But I got confused. So I just ran and did the closest shortcut I could think of and then teleported away. After that, I thought of another grapple shortcut, which is by the Observatory north of Castle Wars. And I know this one's a little bit longer because it has a cutscene attached to it. So I wasn't super excited about doing this one, especially with my time running down. I had about 45 seconds when I got to Castle Wars. Uh, but we got up to the Observatory, we teleported back to our house, and I had one more in mind, which is crossing the Long Bridge just north of Sinclair Mansion. And as soon as I got out of the Fairy Ring, not so fast. Your time is up. This is gonna be our setup for one kill of the Abyssal Sire. I really honestly do not know if this is gonna work or not. Truly, I have no idea. I'm scared to start because if we mess this up, we're going straight to the Penguin Agility course, which is the worst one in the game in my opinion. But we're gonna try it. So I have 12 casts of Shadow Barrage. I can put this, the Sire, I can put the boss to sleep 12 times. Let's just give it a shot. So first we put it to sleep. These little tentacle things are gonna wake up. And they're gonna fall over, and now we just gotta kill this thing. The problem is these things regain health pretty quick. That's our main issue. And every time we put the Sire to sleep, we have 30 seconds before he wakes up again. This is doing really well though right now. I forgot to also turn the music on. You know what? We're actually just gonna re-put everything to sleep. So we can reset the timer to 30 seconds, and we just put everything back to sleep. Okay, and this time, oh yeah, this, this trident is doing work. It's doing work for us. So I was really scared about this. I bought 300 charges, just in case. I didn't know if it was gonna do enough damage at all. But it looks like I probably could've gotten away with a lot less charges. Okay, now we just have one more to do. I'm gonna put it to sleep one more time. Okay, so then it's this one, and then it's just time to kill the actual boss. Oh, I didn't even have the brew that I brought. I brought an ancient brew, we didn't even need it. Okay, so we run back over here, and now is the boss. There's two phases of the boss. This is the first phase. This part is actually, in my opinion, not that bad. The first part is actually kind of easy. We just kind of stand here, like we're gonna take a little bit of chip damage, but not that much. It, it really shouldn't do a terrible amount of damage to us. It's the second part where it spawns a, a ton of like little guys, that's when we get concerned. But for now, this is okay, I think. So right now we gotta get it to half health, and then it moves on to the second phase. Okay, and then this is the tough part. So unfortunately, we have to move all the time. Otherwise, those little vents will like blow us up for a ton of poison damage. And then there's all the little guys that spawn. They do a ton of damage to us. Okay, and the vents just stopped, so we're good now, but we're just tanking so much damage from the little guys. Come on, please. No, please, 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 please. This is just DPS check. At this point, I was panicking a little. I changed my prayers. I don't know why. We're getting a little low here. Oh, come on, it's so close. Come on, please, 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 please. Oh, God. Oh, yes! That was closer, a lot closer than I would have liked it to be. <laughs> Color me surprised. You actually did it. I'm just as shocked as you are. Good work. Enjoy the rest of the task. Well, now it's time for me to actually kill Sire. The mechanics here are the same, it's just a little bit faster now. Instead of using magic, now I use range to deal with the respiratory systems, and this is just because it's a little bit faster. The blowpipe is a faster weapon than the trident, so it tears through the respiratory systems a little bit better. And with better kills, it's a little bit more consistent, you use less supplies. Generally goes a little bit smoother than our first skill. Now for the big thing we care about, the unique drops from the Abyssal Sire. The Abyssal Sire is interesting where all of the unique drops are actually all kind of merged into one drop called the Unsired. So the way this works, is on every kill you have a 1 in 100 chance to get an unsired. When you actually get an unsired, you take it over to the font of consumption, which you pass on the way to the boss. Here you use your unsire on the font and it turns it into one of the uniques of the boss. Each of them are weighted a little bit differently here, but there are a couple different options. 
There's a unique weapon you can make from three of the uniques here called the Abyssal Bludgeon, and that's the most common drop you'll get from the Unsired. There's two other weapons you can get from Unsired, the Abyssal Dagger and the Abyssal Whip, and these are a little bit less common than the Bludgeon pieces. Then there's three sort of other or random items you can get. The Jar of Miasma, which is a display for your house, an Abyssal Head, which is another construction item to display in your house, or used to recolor your Slayer Helm, and last, the Abyssal Orphan. Unfortunately, the Abyssal Orphan is the most rare at 1 in 25.6, so times that by the 1 in 100 for the Unsired, and it's 1 in 2560 to actually get the pet from this boss. But the nice thing about it is we should be guaranteed to get a couple Unsired over the course of our Slayer task. Other than that, the average drop at Sire is, it's all right. It's about 75K. There's some bad ones, there's some good ones, but for the most part, we're gonna be getting pretty consistent drops here. Sometimes the kills got a little dangerous, but we powered through our first milestone task up to 350K on Sire. At this point, I had one unsired previously, which is at about 15 KC, and I was one whole task dry of getting an unsired. So as we were approaching 400, I was feeling like we had to start getting something soon. Oh, number 400 is coins, huge, let's go. Yeah, so it wasn't really working out like that. We've done about half the task and already no unsired, approaching 450 KC. I even accidentally got a strength level on one of these kills. Then I forgot to record it, but we did get to 450kc on the Abyssal Sire. And lucky for us, it wasn't too much longer before finally, first one of the task, an Unsired. About a 400 streak dry. 456, man! Oh no! It was the jar! No shot! Unfortunately, I got the cheapest one. But hey, not 29 kills later, we got lucky again. Oh my god, yes, another one. Oh, this is so good, we're making up for before. Come on, baby. Give me something new. Okay, bludgeon piece. Okay, the claw? Yeah. Yeah. Well, then wouldn't you believe it, on 498 KC, Oh my god, another one. Let's go, dude. At this point, it was pretty late, so our reaction is a little bit muted, but... Okay, another bludgeon piece. Another bludgeon piece. That's good. We'll take that. With only about 25 kills left, I wasn't really expecting anything, so I was just trying to finish out the task. Hey, it's number 500. And yet, on number 509, we finally caught back up to the unsired rate we expected. Oh my god, another one. This is actually insane. This is nuts. This is nuts. And so what I expected to be maybe a two unsired task turned into four unsireds, which turned into a full bludgeon and a jar of miasma. Oh my god, it's over. 523 sire code count. The whole task done at sire. Holy cow, man. It's 4.30 in the morning. And so finally, it was time to rest.